My family and I love going hiking, and there's something about the way we hike. We, we're one of those families that like to explore and go off the main pathway. We like to find our new, a new destination, or if there's an existing destination, we like to find an, an original pathway to get there. But there's a risk with this. When we do this, there's a risk of getting lost. And um, my dad introduced a tool, a simple tool and a technique to mitigate this risk. Um, he gave us something called flagging tape. He said, if you, if you mark your starting point nice and visible, and as you progress into the woods and continue to mark your path, um, you have a clear pathway back. And um, there's two things that come for free with this as well. If you need help, others can find you. They can follow that visible pathway all, all the way to where you're at. Um, if you're successful and you find a cool destination, um, you've not just been an explorer, you've become a discoverer. You can actually share this pathway with others. Well, I've spent much of my career working with pe people with disabilities, and those principles have carried over into my field. Um, people who have barriers or some kind of disability often have to create their own pathway to reach a skill. Simple skills like doing up your zipper of your jacket, or say, doing up your shoes, or simple tasks like eating with a fork. Um, you and I take this for granted. It's quite easy to, to learn these skills, and there might be a conventional method that your mother or father taught you to do these. But the individuals that I work with often have multiple people, multiple support workers, helping them learn these skills, sometimes taking up to months and years to learn these skills. This brings about a new problem. When a student comes into a school, I, I spent time working in the education field as well, and uh, when a student comes into our school, we often don't know where are they on this pathway of theirs, on their journey to learn a skill. And um, there's different techniques we use to communicate with each other, um, different organizations and between home and school to try to figure out where this person's at. And um, I'll show you the existing technology that we're using right now. And this is, this is uh, how we're communicating with each other. Um, we get a box that represents that child and we have information in this box that centers around their behaviors. We get behavior reports. We have maybe safety plans. Um, we have uh, information that centers around the curriculum. Um, we have also information that, um, really good information around the disability they have. This kind of would be like if it were hiking, getting a map, a very general map that says, Kevin and his family are kind of in this area maybe the area of Thunder Bay somewhere. And it's helpful, but it doesn't show us where we're actually at. Um, I went home one day after work and um, found my kids mowing the lawn, and they had actually broken the lawnmower blade. And uh, I'm one of those guys that quickly say, well, it's time to get a, a new lawnmower, because I'm not a mechanically inclined person, and none of us in our family are. And one of our kids found an online video where someone had um, broken down step by step how to fix the lawnmower. And it wasn't just any lawnmower, it was this particular make and model that I had. We watched that video and we said, man, we can do that. That's something we can do. And so quickly we went and got the right materials and we actually fixed our lawnmower. This was a, a, a moment where I realized, hey, why don't we go to school? When next, next time when I go to school, why don't I take my cell phone out and let's, let's videotape exactly where the students that we're working with are at in their progress. And uh, so we took a couple students and we started doing this. And we, uh, there's, there's different benefits that came right away. As we videotaped these different strategies of where the students were at, we were able as a care team or an education team start to become consistent uh, uh, on how we were practicing any, any of these skills. Um, as the student progressed, again, we could create more videos around those strategies. And again, just like hiking, um, there was two things that came out for free. If we had new teachers in the classroom or if we had specialists like occupation therapists or physiotherapists come into our room, um, we were able to bring them up to where we're at and ask for help and say, what should we do next? Do you have any ideas? And um, as the student progressed and obtained cool destinations and obtained these skills, 
um, not only were they an explorer and us as a team, we were able to share these, this pathway with other students that were coming in. Not just our success, but the whole historical pathway of how we got there. Enough talking about this. I, I want to introduce you to a student named Jamie, and I want to thank Jamie and his family. They've uh, let us look at a couple of his uh, strategies and a couple of the pathways that he's created. And let's browse into it. Actually, I'm a part of a, a research team right now in the software team that's developing a, a platform where we can actually map these pathways for the student. And let's take a, a look at the communication strategy that Jamie's working on. And let's jump in and take a look at this strategy. And if you were a new worker, you would be able to jump right in and actually see this is where Jamie's at. And this strategy is a communication strategy. Jamie has autism. He's uh, 16, 17, I think, at this point. Um, and he loves cheesies. Um, Jamie, when he wants something really bad, what he does is he goes to an individual at this stage in his life. Um, he finds an individual he knows that can obtain the thing that he wants. And he'll grab their arm and pull them towards that thing that he wants. And so we have cheesies across the table here. And we know that he's going to ask for it. And this is a strategy that we found that we wanted to try out with Jamie. And when he grabs and, and communicates that he wants it, we're going to interrupt his process, and we're going to exchange that with putting a card on the table. We have a card on the table that you're going to see right here. And we're going to get him to pick up that card, and our hopes are that he's going to transfer his one communication with a new communication of handing a card over. Um, and let's take a look. <laughs> So we have the person behind him, they're going to actually bring his hand down and get him to grab the card and hand it over. Now, I'm choosing this video because this is the first moment Jamie asks independently, he's going to hand the card over independently asking for a cheesy. And if you missed that, I'm going to do that one more time, right there. That's his old communication, and he's going to... It's the moment, we like to call this the mama moment, the first time that he spoke the language that we were teaching. Okay. And so that was a, the first entry. That we thought, well, this is cool, let's try this out, let's keep working on this. And as you can see, there's many entries along the way. Um, one concern was Jamie didn't seem very happy with the whole exercise. And uh, so here's, here's, a, here's about three or four weeks later. Um, we have now the, the, we put the card on a binder. And um, you'll see if Jamie actually enjoys this now. Now, if you've worked with people with severe autism, you know that um, getting smiles, legitimate smiles and eye contact, sometimes is something that's taught, where this is a legitimate smile coming from Jamie. It's not just the cheesy, it's the enjoyment of asking for it. Here's about six months later. Um, there's three items now. And so we're trying to progress in his skill and say, hey, well, we can't just have him asking for cheesies all the time. What other things does Jamie enjoy? And um, we have cheesies here, juice, and uh, he also loves Jan Arden. And if we have Jan Arden playing in the background, if someone were to shut it off, he gets quite upset. So we have a little Jan Arden card there, too. So I'm going to shut off Jan Arden. And we'll see what Jamie asks for. I actually thought at this time uh, he was going to ask for cheesies, but you see we don't aren't sitting across the table now. He can actually wander around asking for these things. I want music. Well, who would have known uh, Jan Arden beat out cheesies? So. Uh, 
Well, uh, let's take a look at another strategy that we're working on. And uh, exercise is something that's quite difficult when uh, someone is a concrete thinker. You or I, if we were convinced to ride a, an exercise bike, it's quite uncomfortable. We're imagining uh, getting a little skinnier or maybe being healthy enough to play with our grandkids someday. And um, to one, we actually had a co-op student in our classroom that was inspired by the last pathway and said, hey, you're attaching the stimuli of, of food, um, and we noticed that he liked music. What if we got him on a bike, and we got him biking, turning his feet, and every time he would jump off, we would shut the TV off or the, or the music or something that he was enjoying. I wonder if he would attach these two things together. So this is kind of an original idea that came out within uh, locally, actually. And uh, here's a few weeks after doing that, and here's uh, the first time that we kind of noticed that Jamie is pushing on his own, and he's buying into the whole activity. I keep my hands on the, his feet to try to um, mitigate the risk of the, if you've ever ridden a spinner bike, you know that if the, your foot comes off the pedal, it'll come around and hit the back of your leg. And so we want it to be a successful uh, experience. So we weren't sure at this point, was this a, a scalable idea? Was uh, we're, we're always going to have an individual there helping Jamie uh, uh, ride the bike. Say he actually enjoys doing this. That, um, some of us were wondering, should we keep doing this? And uh, well, we kept doing the activity. As you can see, there's many entries in here as Jamie progressed in this. And let's just jump ahead because of time's sake here. And let's take a look. At this point, you can see that we have earphones on Jamie. And uh, we no longer are using TV. We thought this was, we actually had an occupation therapist. Remember I said, uh, we could actually bring people, uh, experts, up and give us the next direction. And one of the directions was maybe put earphones on instead um, because then Jamie um, would be able to generalize this out into, the, into uh, more of the public and go to other areas. And you'll see that he also uh, has figured out how to fix the feet falling off the pedal. So at this point, Jamie is asking, using his communication, and now asking to actually ride the bike. And he's doing about 35 minutes a day at this point. And um, while I could spend all day, just like uh, my family reaching cool destinations, uh, enjoying the destinations that Jamie has reached, um, but I want to deconstruct what we're doing here a bit. And uh, so this is a term that, uh, is often used in business, corporate memory. It's, it's when it kind of addresses the issue of you've all been in an organization where you have someone retiring or someone moving to a different uh, um, company and some of the best processes are in their head and uh, it's quite detrimental to the organization. So it's a whole field of trying to figure out how do we get the information into the company. And Jamie has this problem in spades. Um, he has multiple individuals working with them with strategies in their head. And like I said, all he has is that box, and it's not in there. And multiple organizations that have, whether it be a group home or even his house that he lives in, brothers and sisters with good ideas on how to work with Jamie. And uh, by creating a, a portfolio that's visual, that anybody can come and see that pathway, we've, um, anybody with a good idea of when, they, when you're working with Jamie, you can actually place that in that portfolio for him. Um, Instantly, it provides another thing. It provides consistency. If uh, you've ever coached sports, you know that double coaching or triple coaching is quite harmful for the actual progression for someone to learn a skill. Um, at this point, we could have peer support workers, the existing resources that are around the school or brothers and sisters or neighbors that can come and participate in a consistent manner, um, which is something we're not even doing at an organizational level sometimes. Uh, 
the last point I want to give is uh, collaboration. And I could talk more about how organizations can collaborate. But um, the exciting slice that came, we weren't expecting this, that uh, Jamie and his team, because they've explored and discovered a new pathway, he actually can participate in someone else's education plan. He can now actually share his whole pathway of learning, the whole history from the beginning to the end, not just his successes, but the whole progress and how to do that strategy with someone else, a new student, or in a different school board, or even in a different country. Um, so what can we take away from this? I just want to encourage you, if you are a teacher, or uh, if you're a parent, and you, or even if you're that guy who created the, who, who finds his lawnmower broken and can't find anywhere to fix that lawnmower, if you document, if you make a visible mark where you're at, and you follow this principle, and you continue to mark as you progress, um, if you can fix your problem, if you can get to your destination, you have the ability not to just be an explorer, but to be someone who can share with others. And that's it.